Hello again, thanks for joining us. And it's Tim Spector from the Zoe Symptom Study app giving you the latest week's update. And it's been, once again, quite a busy week. Lots to talk about in the news. And we'll try and get through these topics. The first thing to look at is uh, the number of new cases that we're seeing on the app. Remember, these are symptomatic cases. And really things haven't changed from last week. We're still seeing between two and 3,000 cases, which is about our confidence limits. 2,700 is what we uh, recorded uh, today. So this is generally good news. It means things are pretty stable at this low level. And again, once again, it's always important to put all this data into context. And if you look at the other European countries, we're still doing very well. Um, still in that, uh, the good group with Israel and Portugal and uh, the other countries, luckily though, are generally also coming down and should be down to our levels uh, in a few weeks, hopefully. One thing we've noticed different from last week is we've seen a bit of an uptick in people aged 50 to 59. Now, we don't really know the reason for this, but uh, my speculation at the moment, we'll, until we get harder data, is that this is increased socialising, people going out more, and either people that have been partially vaccinated or those that are perhaps rushing out just after their um, first vaccine has had a, a chance to work. So if you are one of those people in that group, do uh, bear that in mind, uh, because certainly until we've had two vaccinations, uh, the risk is still uh, not great. The other thing is that these, these cases generally are appearing to be more milder and not requiring hospitalization overall, because they're not affecting the elderly, or people uh, that have really been double vaccinated. So that's uh, good news. Now, we changed the methodology, as you know, last week, and we had uh, a number of inquiries and things on this, and there was a blog on our website to discuss in more detail. And this really gives us a better picture of generalizing our results, and we're fairly happy with these, but uh, you may have noticed some change in your local area uh, where rates have suddenly gone up or down. So uh, don't worry too much about that but it seems to be settling down now, so should be uh, good, good to go from now on in, uh, at least until everyone is uh, vaccinated. Now, um, let's talk about the Indian variant. We're certainly uh, aware of it. We've seen what's happened in India, although it's good to see rates uh, starting to come down now. And in the UK, we definitely are seeing localised outbreaks, but um, the uh, NHS and government have, have found out are due to this uh, new variant, which um, has shown peaks in our data in places like Bedford and Bolton. Um, but Newport in Wales is certainly uh, very high at the moment. And the surrounding areas around Glasgow, East Dunbartonshire and Lanarkshire in Scotland, and Aberdeen, Leeds, and those areas around it, Kirklees and Wakefield, uh, are certainly having high rates per 100,000. Now, the thing that links uh, many of these areas are some demographic and social ones, that they are generally, but not exclusively, uh, areas of high deprivation. And this is important because viruses are more likely to spread in areas of low income and where there's many multi-generational families living together and there's less people working from home. So people are more likely to be going on public transport and mixing in, in confined spaces. So this is uh, to be expected. Um, and it could also be a factor that vaccination rates are also lower in many, but not all of those um, deprived areas. And uh, for example, Lambeth and uh, Leeds, uh, according to our data. Now, 
these increases are also due to uh, the unvaccinated people in our uh, in these areas that are socialising more and uh, may have obviously brought the original virus back um, from trips to India. But that's why it's really important to keep reporting on the app so we can continue to stay ahead of the curve and try and spot these outbreaks. And you may remember that we we, we had the same sort of stories back um, uh, in, in the last few months with the South African variant, the Brazilian variant, and generally by keeping an eye on things, uh, it never really got out of control. And cast your mind back to last summer in the Midlands, we also had consistent outbreaks there, uh, particularly again in deprived areas that didn't lead to widespread outbreaks. Now, the other thing that's important is that while we're getting these peaks in these areas, they're not spreading wider to the whole of that uh, area or those, those counties really at any large scale. And these, these low rates of two to 3,000 people a day, I think are what we're gonna expect for the next uh, few weeks going forward, maybe months. And we mustn't get worried about that because not only are the cases milder, but you realize that a thousand people uh, a day get diagnosed with a cancer. And obviously that's much more serious than this and that happens every day. Um, and the other fact to remember is that although there were a lot of scare stories in the media, and the story may still change. Uh, as of today, really, there's no hard evidence that the transmission of the new Indian variant is really significantly higher than that of the um, Kent variant, which took over from the previous variant. There's absolutely no evidence that it causes any more severe disease or leads to hospitalization. So I think that's that's really important because it it doesn't it makes it much less likely that this is either going to overrun the NHS or that it's going to uh, stop us coming out of lockdown or change our vaccination strategy because there's no evidence that it uh, is breaking through uh, people with vaccinations. So the overall message is don't panic, uh, but do stay vigilant. Next, I want to talk about what kind of COVID you might get if you've been vaccinated and unlucky enough to get the virus, i.e. you're in that small percentage group that uh, aren't completely protected. Well, we've uh, got a paper coming out in a few days and I, this is just a, a teaser of some of the, the findings in that paper by my colleagues at King's College. But we've got over 2,278 uh, individuals mainly have been logging with us and had a positive PCR test after 14 days after their uh, vaccination. And most of these were after a single vaccination with only uh, uh, around 300 uh, reports after two shots, which again is reassuring. Now, what uh, we saw is that there were some Factors we looked at the people who equal had vaccination didn't get COVID and then vaccination did get COVID. We're seeing find some risk factors that do seem to be important. So the first one is that if you've got f f suffering from frailty, so you're older, uh, you've got lots of other common conditions, and which might be weakening your immune system, then there's a, a greater chance you're going to get. Uh, COVID after vaccination and we found that oh, in reverse if you're uh, thinner you've got a, a lower BMI you're on a, a good quality diet and you're um, exercising regularly walking etc uh, you're going to um, have less chance of that occurring now there's also a general effect of deprivation uh, on this risk, which is important. So where you live might also uh, play a small factor. But um, 
most of the symptoms were much less likely to be observed in this vaccinated group. So had less symptoms and they didn't last as long, they weren't as severe, not as likely to go to hospital. So much less to worry about. It's more like having a, a mild flu or heavy cold. I want to talk about long COVID results and many of our loggers are particularly interested in this and of course it does concern unvaccinated people as well. Um, thinking, well, if, I, if I'm young, uh, do I really need the vaccine? Well, one reason would be to prevent long COVID. And so we've looked at some of our initial data, it's not the final data at all, um, but it looks like you're several fold less likely to get long COVID uh, if you've been vaccinated, even with one shot. So that's uh, very good news. And we see that the classic triad of symptoms disappearing much faster in vaccinated people. So it just doesn't hang around like it did in its, in its pure nasty state. And therefore long COVID is both less likely to occur and it's also much less severe even when it does occur. And I think this is a really important message uh, for uh, anyone thinking about who haven't been, hasn't been vaccinated yet, uh, how important it is uh, to reduce that risk. Now, we do want to know more uh, about long COVID. It's really hard to classify and we want to get more people who weren't able to tell us first time around about their symptoms. And so we're going to be releasing a survey for this. So do look out for it on the app and be grateful you can get involved and tell your friends. Um, our new feature, the COVID question time, is going live and I'm doing my first video on Friday with all the top questions that were voted by you guys that you wanted answered. Uh, some of them are quite tough, so we'll see how we get on. Um, but and if yours hasn't been answered this time, just we the app goes uh, we'll give you a new link every Friday to ask some new ones. So please remember to like and subscribe uh, this channel. Hit the notification button if you want to be informed as soon as a, a video goes live. And above all, stay safe and keep logging. Thank you.